Hi everyone, this is Gregor von Personus and in these weird times, more and more musicians have contacted us asking how they can live stream their music with their ARC mixers, preferably in a free solution such as Open Broadcaster Software, OBS. Now, sometimes it can be a bit more clunky to set up a stream with Mac than with Windows because the multi-outputs of interfaces aren't always reported correctly to OBS. But fortunately, with the ARC mixers, it's an absolute breeze and I'm gonna walk you through the process right now. Let's go. If you want to stream with your headphones on, then connect them to your phone's output on the ARC mixer. Connect your speakers to the control room left and right output on the ARC mixer. This will allow you to exclude certain things from your monitor mix on the speakers, such as your microphone, which you might not want to hear, but still send the signal out to your stream audience. Next up, take your XLR cable and connect your microphone with it to input one. If it's a condenser mic, then activate 48 volts Fanta power now. Now you can turn up the gain on the microphone until you can see that green system LED blink when you give a signal. Now it's time to turn up the main volume and the volume on input one. And you should see some level as soon as you give the mic some signal. Repeat this process for any other input such as the guitar or synthesizer. If you want your mic signal to only go out to your audience but you don't want it on your speakers, then activate the PFL button on input one. Finally, we only have to get the computer audio into our streaming software as well. And the super channel on the AI8C is perfect for that because it allows us to do so without any extra cabling required. Just press down the USB return button and you're good to go. Now certain software such as OBS only receive the first two software inputs, but fortunately our engineers have thought of that also. Simply press down the USB send one two button above main volume and you're good in any situation. Okay, that's us done for the hardware side of things. Let's look at the software side, what we have to do in Studio One. So we go to Preferences, Audio Setup, and just ensure that the Studio Live ARC mixer is chosen as a recording and playback device. And now we can already switch to OBS, and this is what it looks like when you open it up for the first time. So it's a blank canvas, as you can see. You could stream this already, but your audience would just see a black screen. That's why we have to add a couple of sources first. The first display source that we want to add is probably a screen. So we click on that plus here in the sources window and choose display capture. Hit enter and your display screen should be visible in OBS now. Okay, that's already in place. We can resize it if necessary, but in my case, it's a perfect fit. Next, I also want to add my camera to the setup and um, that you can do also by clicking plus once again and then selecting video capture device. So I'm just gonna give that a name, DSLR for my camera and hit OK. And as soon as I select my HDMI input here, you're gonna see my stupid face. <laughs> and that's also added to my stream now. And I can resize it and reposition it wherever needed. You can also toggle show height between the layers, by the way. Okay, so we're basically almost there. Now let's talk through the necessary preferences in OBS and we can get started. The most essential settings for us are nested in the Streams, Output and Audio tab. Let's start with the Audio tab because if our audience can't hear us, then all the other settings are kind of pointless as well. So go there and as a mic auxiliary audio input, you want to choose our Studio Live AR8C once again. And that's all the settings we have to do here. Next, we need to connect to our stream server so that we can actually connect to our audience in the first place. There's a bunch of options, as you can see, Facebook Live, YouTube, Twitch, all the big ones. And of course, you can also add your own customer address. Now, if you're going for one of the big streaming platforms out there, such as YouTube or Twitch, then you also need a stream key, which you can get by clicking on the link in brackets and following the instructions. Last but not least, we want to go to the output tab and it's really critical to set that right so that you can stream in the best possible quality without asking too much of your internet bandwidth or your computer. So let's talk about bitrate first. I don't know your exact computer configuration, so it's very hard for me to give any general recommendations here. But if you have a computer that's not so great and an internet connection is kind of slow, you probably want to stay between two and a half and maximum eight megabits per second. So that would be 8,000 kilobits per second. This is pretty much what YouTube recommends for 1080p streaming, as you can see in the screenshot here. 
If you're going for a higher bitrate, then there's one setting in the advanced section that I really recommend to you, and that is to change your software encoding, which is handled by the CPU, to hardware encoding, which is managed by the graphics card, the GPU. This is because audio streaming is mainly taxing the CPU in the first place, and if your CPU is handling all the encoding duties on top of that, your CPU fans will spin up quite a bit, and you might reach your performance limits very quickly. Now of course, there's way more settings that you can configure in OBS, but these ones should be more than enough to get you started with a good looking and great sounding stream. If you have any other questions or issues setting up your stream, then just write in the comments and I'll try my best to get back to you. Thank you so much and happy streaming!